Hi. Now in this tutorial, what I want to do is show you how we go about drawing a box and whisker plot for a set of data. I've got an example set of discrete data here. A box plot essentially is a diagram that's going to look like this and it gives us a visual idea of the spread of the data that we're looking at. But before we draw this, what we need to do is look at the essential features of this type of diagram. When you draw a diagram like this, you're going to need to draw a scale. And so your scale would normally be a horizontal line like this. Although you can see diagrams where this is a vertical scale and the box and whisker plot is drawn vertically. It doesn't really matter. So we have our scale. Now, what are these markers here and here? Well, if we're drawing a box and whisker diagram without considering outliers, then this value here and this value here represent the lowest and the highest observations in your set of data. And this line here, this line here, and this line here, what do these represent? Well, they represent the quartiles Q1, Q2, and Q3. Remember, Q1 is called the lower quartile. Q2, the second quartile, is often referred to as the median. And Q3 is the upper quartile. So this essentially is a very basic box and whisker diagram. And that's what we're going to do in this first example here. Draw a basic box and whisker diagram not showing outliers. So to do this we need to look at our set of data. We've got our piece of graph paper here and decide on a scale. Well the scale I've decided on is going to be this one where we're going from 0 to 35. That clearly encompasses all of this data here. So what we need to do is first of all mark on our lowest value which is clearly the one okay and that's going to be marked off like this so we'll do it in red so if we go to one we've got zero here one's going to be say there okay so we just put a marker there we look at our highest observation, which is 33. So that's going to be 30, 31, 32, 33. So just mark in that highest value there. Now we need to draw on our quartiles. And we start with the median here. I'm assuming that you're familiar with working out quartiles for discrete data. If not, do check this out on my website, okay, examsolutions.net. So Q2, the middle value. And when you've got a list of data, count up how many observations you've got. In this case, we've got 11 observations. Add 1, which brings us up to 12, and divide by 2, that's 6. So we're looking for the sixth value in this list. That will be the middle value. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 is going to be the 15. And We'll mark on Q2, the median then at 15. So it's going to look something like that. Now we need to work out the lower quartile. And because the median was the sixth value, we must have five values to the left of the median. And to get the middle of these five values, we just add one to the number of observations. Five add one is six, divide by two, is 3. It's the third value in. I know you could have seen that from such a small list here, but this is the method we would use if we had a long list. So 12 then is our lower quartile. So if we just mark that in, we've got 12 there. Now we need our upper quartile. Remember, we now have five values to the right of the median. So again, by adding one, that's six, divide by two, three. We're looking for the third value in in this list, which is clearly the 19. So 19 is our upper quartile. So if we mark that in there, we've got our three quartiles. 
So we just need to complete the diagram similar to this. So what we do is we just complete the box here and we draw in these lines here which are called the whiskers. So hence the name box and whisker plot. Now when we draw different types of box and whisker plots. You can see this one looks slightly different to the one we've got here. Notice that in this one here, the width here between Q2 and Q1 is much the same as the width between Q3 and Q2. Whereas you can see that this box plot here, this width here is greater than this width here. So box plots are going to vary in their shape. Now when you get a box plot something like this where this width here is the same roughly as that width there, we say that this distribution is symmetrical. And if we were looking at the types of frequency diagrams we would get for a symmetrical box plot, they would look something like this. Okay, there's our symmetrical frequency diagram. And if we were looking at the cumulative frequency graph, then the green is the median and either side of this, the lower quartile and the upper quartile, they would be evenly placed, okay, giving rise to this type of box plot. So we've got a symmetrical type of one here. So I said earlier that you can get different types of drawings then for box plots. You might get one that looks like this, okay? A bit similar to what we've got here, where this width here is greater than that width. Or you can get this one here. You'll notice this width here is greater than this width here. Now we give names to these types of distributions. We talk about their skewness. This is symmetrical, but in a situation like this, we talk about it being positive skew. And for positive skew, this width, Q3 minus Q2, is greater than Q2 minus Q1, summarized by this inequality here. And so for this diagram, this is called negative skew. And we form this inequality. Q2 minus Q1, which represents this width, is greater than Q3 minus Q2, this width here. So this is a good way then of determining whether a distribution is positively skewed or negatively skewed. If it was symmetrical, obviously we would expect these widths to be equal. We'll go on to look at this and we'll do a calculation on this one. But first of all, let's just have a look at the kind of frequency diagrams and commutative frequency graphs we would get for this type of skewness. We'd have something looking like this for the frequency diagram. Notice this part here is really pulled out. We call this the tail and it's pulled out in the positive sense. So we have positive skew. And when it comes to the cumulative frequency curve, you'll notice it's stretched out on this stretch here, giving rise to this kind of stretch here between the median and the upper quartile. And when it comes on to the frequency diagram, the cumulative frequency curve for negative skew, you're going to get something the opposite to this. Okay, here's our tail in the negative sense. And our commutative frequency curve has this bit, which seems to be stretched out before we get to this section here. Now, for this diagram here, what type of skewness have we got? Well, I think visually you can see anyway it's positively skewed because this width here is greater than this width. So we've got positive skew. But let's suppose you just had lots of data no diagram here and you just wanted to calculate it okay what type of skewness that you're going to have then you're going to need to work out q3 minus q2 okay 
Q3 minus Q2 for this diagram will give us this width here. I know you could just count the squares there, but Q3, 19, Q2, 15. So you've got 19 minus 15, which clearly is 4. Whereas if we work out this width, we've got Q2 minus Q1. Q2 minus Q1 is going to be 15 minus 12. 15 minus 12 gives us 3. So positive skew. Right, well enough of this. Let's now talk about what we mean by outliers. Well, these are particular values which are one and a half times the interquartile range, that's Q3 minus Q1, below or above the lower quartile or the upper quartile. We calculate these using the following two formulas. For lower outliers, we're looking at Q1, the lower quartile, minus one and a half times the interquartile range, Q3 minus Q1. And to establish a boundary point for upper outliers, we use this formula, Q3 plus one and a half times the interquartile range, Q3 minus Q1 there. I think this is best illustrated, though, if we just tackle an example, this example up here. So when it comes to looking at the outliers, let's just put that in there, outliers. If we're looking for the lower outliers, we've got to do the calculation Q1 then minus one and a half times the interquartile range, Q3 minus Q1. So for this, we've got Q1, which is 12, and then we're going to minus 1.5, one and a half times the interquartile range. So that's going to be 19 minus 12. 19 minus 12 there. Now if you work this out, what we get is 1.5. So 1.5 is going to be our boundary point for any outliers, the lower outliers. And what I notice is that in my set of data here, 1 is below 1.5. And it's the only observation that is below it. And so we mark an outlier, the 1 here, on our scale as with a cross. Okay, So we we'll just mark 1 in here with a cross. So that means that 8 becomes our next lowest value. So this is how it differs from the one above. So what we do is we go to 8 now and we mark that in as our lowest value. So there could be another value in here. Just suppose there had been, say, another 1 or a 0, for instance. I can have several outliers below the 1.5. Now let's look at the upper outliers, see if there are any values for that. So to do that, we use this formula here. We look at Q3 plus 1.5 times the interquartile range, Q3 minus Q1. And if we work that out, we've got Q3, which is 19. And from this, we need to add 1.5 times the interquartile range, 19 minus 12, Q3 minus Q1. And if we work this out, what we get is 29.5. Have we got any values now that are greater than 29.5? Well, yes, we've just got one value, the 33. And that becomes our outlier. So 33 is going to be there, and we mark it across. Now, that means that the 26 becomes the highest value, OK? So we mark in our 26, then, with a line like so. Our quartiles are going to be exactly the same as what we had before, so we can mark those in in the same way. OK, one there. Lower quartile, 
the median second quartile and the third quartile or upper quartile there okay so if we draw our box in complete the box it's going to look something like that and then we've got our whiskers looking like that and we've got our outliers marked with crosses as I say you can have more than one outlier on uh, each of these sides sometimes there might not even be an outlier okay so that's how we go about working them out and plotting them on so I hope that's given you a general overview of outliers skewness box and whisker plots that you'll be able to apply now in any example that you get okay